Yo guys, what's up? Since the last video did pretty well, I thought about uploading another one already today, so let's get started. This one will be about TVZ. Uh, I've chosen a TVZ replay that I think um, works in like every game, like the build works in every game. So I choose this one in particular. Uh, let's get right into First I'm going to explain to you how this build order works out or how it works in general. So let's have a look in this game from my perspective. So this is a TVZ of course. Uh, it's going to be a triple CC Banshee build order. The most common build. It starts off like every game with a normal Reaper expand, which is a depot into barracks, into gas. And then you just continuously make SCVs until you morph the orbital. Pretty standard, the, the replay as always will be in the description if you want to copy this. Uh, I might also in the future put some more replays in there. This is just for the build alone. I'm going to make some more videos on like how the structure works in late game and whatever in the future. Um, maybe it's actually going to be the next video. I'm probably going to do it as the next video actually. How the structure works in late game. Like after the build. Um, that's probably going to be the next video here. Um, either way, after the barracks, you send the SCV out to scout, and then you send another SCV to make the command center, and obviously you start the Reaper plus a depot. And then you just command check with this upgrade. SCV Complete. whether this is hatch first or pull first. When the SCV arrives and the hatchery is pretty much nearly done, you can assume that it is hatch first, so you can just go back with the SCV. You don't need to block the third base, as on most maps, Zerg players can just take the other base. And don't have any negative effects really and you just lose mining time so don't bother like blocking it's not really that big of a deal and just get the factory now and a marine of course to deny the overlord and then you build a reactor now for this build you don't take a second gas that's the most important step in this build you do some harassment with the reaper as always but you don't take a second gas don't take it yet uh, keep 16 mer workers in the mineral line if you can uh, if you don't have 16 and rally or um, if you have more than 16 and rally to the low ground of course in this case you can see me do that but in this case I just bring one SCV down to the low ground um, I just really play this build down to the wire right so we get the third command center and now if you look at my money I actually don't have a lot of money I only have a hundred gas and 200 minerals so this is an important step. So how, how do I spend my money right now? The first building that I'm going to build is the starport. I'm going to build the starport. Obviously I also swapped my add-ons here. I got a reactor for my factory. But first I build the starport. Then I take the second gas in my main base. Uh, in my main base makes this build a little bit easier. Then I rally some more SCVs over here because I need then two more for the gas of course. So always keep the perfect saturation. And then obviously I build Hellions now as the next step. Don't cut worker production. Worker production is always uh, the priority. Don't cut that one. So we get two Hellions and then we get the tech lab on the, the barracks. Ah, come on, there you go, tech lab. And um, we just continue to make SCVs and Hellions. So with the first Hellions you can move across the map. But you always want to be aware of like a circling counterattack, so we want to keep the other Hellions at home, preferably. Uh, but we'll get that in the later in this video. First we're gonna focus on the build alone. Then you swap the add-ons, you get Cloak and Banshees and an Orbital. You don't make a third depot by the way, you don't have to make a third depot at this point. You only have these two on the wall. But soon, um, you're gonna make the, the next one, there you go. And you go up to 8 Hellions in total. So 4, I have right now 4 Hellions. Um, I'm gonna get 2 more and then 2 more. Then the Tech Lab on the barracks. 1 Marine to deny the Overlord. You can also get a 2nd Marine and then get the Tech Lab. It doesn't really matter as much. Uh, continuously drop Mules. You can already take the 3rd base if you want to. You can already land it. Which I'm doing right now. As soon as the Orbital is ready you can land it. Or you can make SCVs with it. Depending on, on what you prefer. Um... Then you make two Banshees, you get them after the two Banshees, you keep the Banshee at home and you add another couple of barracks after the eight Hellions. So after eight Hellions, you add two more barracks and the reactor. 
on the factory. Always make workers. Don't stop making workers. You get like a second gas. This order is not that important. You can get a second gas and then make evades. A third gas, I mean. Um, it's up to you. Uh, you can take the gas and then evades. Um, that's how I like to do it. So I take two gases now. And then I make two evades in my wall. Also, I put every depot in my wall. On this map, I wall off this choke. Because it's not that necessary to wall off over here. Uh, normally, I would wall off like the entrance to my natural. Uh, but on this map, you can wall off here and here, and then you're safe. But normally, I would put my buildings here instead of here. Um, I just can do it on this map because it's it's a pretty nice map to take three bases on. Then, after two Banshees, you make a reactor with the starboard. That's going to be the next uh, add-on. You, you lift the starboard and you make a reactor. You take the gas. And you always make sure that you have 16 SCVs in each mineral line. Always make sure of that. Um, so like these three will go here. Then I'll have this guy go here. These guys go like here. So I just keep the the perfect saturation. After the factory made the reactor, I'm gonna lift it off and make a like put it on the tech club for tanks. And then as soon as I have money, I add two more barracks, and obviously I get one one. One one is important. So let's get one one. There you have the barracks uh, going ham, you produce units, you produce SCVs, and you pr produce depots as much as you can. Don't forget to make depots. Uh, in this case, I'm a little bit busy micring. And then as soon as the starboard is ready, you have to make medevacs. It's very important to always keep up the medevac and tank production. If you forget to make tanks, then you're gonna bank up a lot of gas automatically because you lo lose a lot of building time. You can forget to make marines sometimes because other stuff like making medevacs, SCVs, depots might be more important. But you don't want to forget to make medevacs and siege tanks and upgrades consistently. If you skip these units, because you only have one factory, you're gonna fall behind in tank count rapidly if you forgot to make them. Like let's say I didn't make this tank. If I didn't make this tank, I would now have 300 gas in the bank all the time. And I couldn't really spend it because I don't have two factories. So I would have to get like the second factory earlier in this case. But if you macro well, you don't have to make the second factory that fast. So now this advice is um, something that depends on your gas count. Like if you take a look at my gas count right now, I don't have any gas. So I can just get both gases immediately in my third base as soon as I have 16 mineral guys, right? You might have too much gas in the bank, so you might consider making an armory and getting to two first before taking the gas or just taking one gas or taking two gas and make a factory early. It really depends on your gas. If you don't have a lot of gas, you don't wanna, you want to make the, the, the gases, both gases in the third base, basically. And then you push out with all the marines and the tank. You can also push out with the tank. You can also just push out with the marines. Uh, you push out with everything, basically, uh, half the medevacs, um, with your army, and then you just pressure the third, uh, fourth base. Now after this, you're gonna go into a second factory as soon as you have the money. You obviously don't want to forget the armory. Armory, second factory. And now depending on what your opponent does, you can switch into water mines. So you can, after a couple tanks, you can make water mines. I recommend tanks against Hydroling, Baneling and Roaches. Against Ling Baneling and Ling Baneling Muta, I prefer to make water mines. So if this was Hydroling Baneling, I would just do what I do in this game. Um, and if this was like uh, Ling Baneling only or Ling Baneling Muta, like Ling Baneling Ultra, I would get water mines and drilling claws after the armory is done. But in this case, I just make tanks. Tanks are always a decent choice. Even against Mutas, you can still add some doors with the tanks. It's not that bad. And then I just pressure on my opponent. I get my second factory. This game is a little bit scrappy, so I lose some guys here in the counterattack. And I just pressure the fourth base off the Zerg. The way you pressure the Zerg is something that I'm going to play. explain in another video. This is just purely about the build. And then the next step would be a fourth base. And then 8 barracks, which is what I'm gonna explain in the next video, actually. So these videos are still gonna come up, but this is purely for the build. Which is why I'm now going to go back. So you see, I go tank, so I build a second tech lab. 
Um, but yeah, that's basically it built. With the next two Metavex, you just send like the next two Metavex in a different location. This is how you do it in TVZ. You send the first Metavex to the fourth of the Zerg, then the next Metavex to another location to hit them on two spots. And then at home, you build like a huge tank marine army that you can then use to defend counterattacks or send as a reinforcement. So here you see me like harass them here, harass them here. And then I'm gonna send the reinforcements to another location with the F2 trick. This is why I'm using F2, by the way. You can see me use the F2 trick that I uh, taught you in the last video. So now I press F2, Alt on this medevac. And now I have all the army hotkeys over here hotkeyed, while these armies are separated. Um, you can see me do that in just a bit, I think. Yeah, there you go. So now I press F2. So now I press F2. I now press ALT on these guys to separate them from my main army. Uh, well, kind of. <laughs> Not perfectly done. Now I do. Now I did. So now I did it. <laughs> there you go. Now I separated my army from this uh, with the ALT trick. And yeah, uh, you can already identify how this game went. So let's go right back because I need to explain to you two more things. Second part. Reaper scouting. Reaper scouting is key for this build. So let me show you how the Reaper did in this game. And then I'm also going to show you how the Hellions and the Banshees did in this game. So how do you scout? Well, the Reaper is obviously... First you have the SCV scout and then you have the Reaper. So first you check hatch first or pull first. If it's hatch first, you can play normally. If it's pull first, uh, you want to be more careful. Uh, but once again, I can't explain everything in this game. How to play with the 2 base Zerg. Do you guys want to ask some information on that? You can leave it in the comments. Um, anyway, so this Reaper is scouting. It's hatch first, so I can just play normally. There you go, Reaper doing some harassment. Dip, dip, dip. Trying to get some workers, but obviously the main goal is just to be a little bit annoying. To deny some of the creep, maybe. And to scout the third base. With this Reaper... I want to see the third base. I'm actually not sure if I do this. Sometimes I forget about it on the ladder. Because on my level it's very common for the guys to always have a third. There you go. Third base. So everything is normal. Now the Reaper doesn't need to scout anything else. Third base. Everything is normal. Everything is cool. You can just continue with the build. The Reaper goes back a little bit so that he doesn't do a run by with Zerglings. I've reinforced the Reaper with Hellions. But now you need to be careful. You always want to keep some of the Hellions at home. Two of them. So that you can defend against Zergling run vibes. If now like 6 Zerglings showed up and I would ha have these uh, Hellions on the map. I would take a lot of damage. So always make sure to keep some Hellions in the main base. And then you can harass with these Hellions over here. You can use the Reaper to soak up damage. And then the, the Hellions to deny creep or whatever. Then you can reinforce. The next two Hellions are going to spawn very soon. So they can defend against Zerglings. So you just reinforce a little bit. Um... You don't have to do this, you can also just be very defensive with the Hellions. But I recommend to do it like this. You want to have some kind of presence. So please keep at least two Hellions in the Reaper on the other side of the map. And try and be a little bit annoying, that's the best thing you can do. And you also want to scout with these units. Now if you're unsure what the Zerg player does, you can throw down a scan or you can use the Reaper for scouting. These are the two options. But since you go Banshee, you're safe against most things. So now you have every um, Hellions on the map, and you just keep the Banshee at home against the Zergling run by. But be careful, there could be Zerglings on the map. So always, like, don't dive in, don't try and be too greedy. Like, I see not a lot of creep, so I'm extra careful, I'm being a little bit, huh, where the Zerglings. And now as soon as I have two Banshees, I'm gonna move across the map with them. So I keep the Hellions around for now. I have the Banshees for the counter-attack defense. But now, um... I scouted with my Reaper and I saw the Zerglings in this base, so I know he is not counterattacking me, so I can keep both around. So now I keep the Banshees around and the Hellions. And if there's a counterattack, well, it's kind of what you have to do. You keep active with the um, Banshees. If there's a counterattack, if you feel like you die a lot to counterattack, just send the Hellions back. Like, you can just send the Hellions back and do some harassment with the Banshees alone. In this case, I knew there was no counterattack, so I just did both. And how do you use, use the Banshee? So the reason you wait for two is because they can one-shot drones. So now you try and just be a little bit annoying. You just try and get some drones in the corner. You, you maybe go through here, like, where there's no spot crawler. And you just try and be annoying. As you can see, the Banshees are very annoying. 
even the Hellions can be annoying because he, he doesn't have any creep, he doesn't have any queen, so you can trade off creep against Zirkling all the time. But try not lose the Hellions because they're good for counter-attack defense, just like the Banshees are. So you want to keep either the Banshees or the Hellions alive, or both preferably, so you can defend against counter-attacks. That's the main reason you build these units. Banshees for safety, Hellions for counter-attacks. Um, they just give you safety. See, because I have the Hellions here, I know there's no threat of a counter-attack, so I can just move across the map with everything. So that means I don't have to send the Banshees home. Normally, I would maybe send the Banshees home to defend against a counter-attack, but in this case, I can just keep them on the other side of the map. So this is how I um, play this build, basically. Uh, there's much, not much more to say about it. Um, if you guys have anything else to add or um, anything, any questions for this build, uh, I'm gonna make an additional video as my next video where I'm going to explain like how the structure works, so how exactly do you want to build your buildings, how do you make a wall, how do you, um, how many barracks do you add in TVZ. I'm probably gonna make this one as my next video because it's very interesting I think and very good for as an addition for this video. Um, either way this is how I do it uh, and yeah I don't think there's anything more to add, I mean this is it. The Banshees in this case do some harassment. There's a counter attack but I have reinforcements for this counter-attack, it would be nice also to have the Banshees at home. In this case, I just didn't care because I knew he wouldn't have enough at home if he had the Zirklings over here. And I knew I would have enough reinforcements as well. So this is how you defend against counter-attacks. Um, either have the Banshees or Hellions at home, or make sure that you have enough reinforcements. Where in late game, you can get a Sensitar. Right, um, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like, or a comment, or a question. I appreciate that and uh, see you for the next one. Have a. Uh, yeah, see you for the next one. <laughs>